Limit. Hi everyone, welcome to this really fun video where I show you how I made my Miffy tissue box cover with punch needle embroidery. The very first thing I did was to sketch out a paper pattern. I traced the box that I have to get the base measurement and because there are four main sides to a tissue box, obviously, I chose to feature Miffy, Melanie, an apple and a flower on each respective side. The fifth side was the top of the box where the tissue would be. So whenever I'm doing a punch needle project, I like to sketch the pattern and cut out all the pieces so I can reuse them as templates versus having to sketch something new every time. So the next thing I did was loading the mox cloth onto the embroidery hoop and tracing the template onto the cloth. Okay, step two, you can skip this if you already know how to thread a punch needle. A lot of punch needles come with a thin threader that you feed through the middle of the needle. You place your yarn into the loop of the threader. You pull on the tag so that the yarn moves down the channel. And make sure the tail end of your yarn is behind the slope of the punch needle. So for this project, I wanted to create an art or photo frame look on all sides of the box where the middle bulk of the work is flat and the border is raised and fluffy. You can achieve both textures with punch needle. The flat side is where you punch in from. This creates stitches that lay flat on the cloth. And when you turn your work around, you can see the pile side. That's where you see those adorable fluffy yarn loops. And it's very easy to get this look. All you have to do is turn your work and stab your needle in from that side if you want to work in both flat and loopy textures. Then for Miffy's face, I just use two simple French knots and straight stitches for her nose. I also ended up switching to my Amy Oxford punch needle halfway because I just think it goes through fabric so much smoother and you don't need a yarn threader because there is an open channel that runs the entire length of the needle. So if you're starting out in this medium, try different punch needles out and see what you like best. Now we're in the home stretch. After I got done punch needling everything, I cut out all the pieces and glued in the raw edge of the cloth with hot glue. And to neaten up the back even more, I applied a felt backing. Um, and I repeated this process for all of my pieces.
Assembling everything together is the last step. I chose to do a blanket stitch just because it's what I'm comfortable with. I put the right sides together and made sure I was sewing through all four layers. So felt, monk's cloth, another monk's cloth layer and felt. You can really choose any stitch that, you're, that you like. Um, I could have done like a whip stitch, but like I said, this is kind of my comfort zone. I don't even think this is how you start a knot for a blanket stitch, but it doesn't matter. Um, no one's really, no one's gonna see that first knot anyway. So I continue this process wherever I had to join two edges together. Also, I didn't have to use a yarn needle, like a darning needle for this step. Um, I could have used just a regular needle and thread, but it's just what I'm used to when I'm securing things together in my work. And I wasn't too pleased with that, how that seam looked. But I came up with a brilliant idea as to how to address this and we'll talk about it later in the video. I also sewed along the bottom of the box with a matching colour of the yarn, um, just to neaten up the look. Speaking of neatness, I know that this is not the neatest or most polished sewing I've done in my life, but I figured it's okay. Like no one's gonna no one's gonna take this box, flip it inside out, and inspect the stitches I've done. I mean, if they do, I'll tell them they need to, uh, they have too much time on their hands. I was gonna say they need to get a life, but that sounded a bit too mean. Yay! I couldn't wait to get to this step, which is to flip everything inside out and inspect the final product. And you know what? I'm mostly happy with the direction that most things have taken. Did you think we were done? No. Nope. I mean, <laughs> I was a little extra with this step. I could have very much called it done there, but like I mentioned earlier, I just did not like how the seams of the edges looked. So I had a wonderful idea to take matching yarn and glue on like a little mini border around the border. Um, and I doubled up on the yarn on each side so the colors would seamlessly match. I think it polished up the look very nicely. I mean, look at that versus that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, maybe I was being a bit too fussy about it. Now here we are at the final try on. It fit absolutely perfectly. She's an icon, she's a legend. She is the moment. I'm so proud of how this turned out. I've had this idea for so long and I'm so glad it's finally alive. If you'd like to see more crafty videos like this from me, please subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Goodbye.